the dreamer. The simp is a dreamer. Okay. Let's open up with the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9. Jeremiah, chapter 17, and verse 9. Let's start there. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see what Jeremiah is saying? This is the spirit of Christ speaking here. Okay. Jeremiah is speaking in the spirit of Christ. Says the heart is what? The heart is deceitful above all things. The heart is deceitful above all things. The heart is the mind. Let's give me that in uh, Mark chapter 7, 21. Mark chapter 7, verse 21, to understand what is the heart. The heart is deceitful above all things. Read what you got. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. Mark 7, 21. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from, mm. for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. What did he say? For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So it says, from out, it says, from, for from within, out of the heart of men, the heart of men proceed, proceed evil thoughts. Because your, the, this organ that is sitting in your chest, it doesn't do any thinking. So that's why it says, proceed evil thoughts. So your heart is talking about your mind, because that's where your thoughts come from. Your mind. Go back to where it was at now. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The book of Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The heart Mark. is deceitful above all things. Mm -hmm. And desperately wicked. You see Who that can thing? Know the, heart is, the heart is deceitful above all things. Meaning the mind. The mind is deceitful. It's full of deceit. Okay. Above everything on this earth. And desperately wicked, who can know it? The Lord knows it. That's why go back to Mark now. Mark 7, 21 again. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. The Lord knows it. That's why in here, in the book of Mark, he's breaking, he's breaking it down for us. You understand? Read that. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from mm -hmm. within, out of the hearts of men, proceed evil thoughts. Read. Adulteries. Mm -hmm. Patience. Murders. Stop right there. It says adulteries, fornications, murders. In order for you to commit adultery, what has to go through your mind? Desperation, wickedness, and deceit. You understand? For you to commit adultery, you have to do what? Give me that in Exodus 20. Real quick. Real quick. Exodus 20 verse 14. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 20. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's a commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Because for you to commit adultery, it requires planning. It requires calculations. You understand? Escape plans. If they find me, how am I, what, how, what is my escape route? What is my escape plan and my escape route? You understand? So an adulterer, they have many trains. They have to think about multiple plans on how to escape if they get caught or when they get caught. So guess what? That's why I go back to where it was at. Mark 7, verse 21 again. The book of Mark 7, verse 21. For from within, mm -hmm. out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Right? Adulteries. Adulteries. Go ahead. Fornication. Ray? Mm -hmm. murders murders so adulteries fornications murders so i'm gonna deal with adultery we went to exodus 20 verse 14 let me give in the the give me that in sirach 11 29 real quick sirach chapter 11 verse 29 ecclesiasticus chapter 11 verse 29 read that the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 11 verse 29 mm -hmm. bring not every man into thine house read the deceitful man has many trains. The deceitful man has many trains, meaning what? Many plans, many tricks. Okay? The deceitful man has many trains. Jump down to verse 33. Come on. Take heed of a, mischief, of a mischievous man. Mm -hmm. For he worketh wickedness. He does what? He worketh wickedness. He worketh wickedness. That is the mind of a mischievous man. 
You understand? The man that has many trains. He says, it, he says, verse 29 says, for the deceitful man. So he's giving you the type of the type of mindset this man has. Deceit. For the deceitful man have many trains. Read verse 33 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 33. Take heed mm -hmm. of a mischief man, for he Come worketh on. wickedness. He does what? He worketh wickedness. So somebody that is working wickedness, that means they have to sit down and plan it out and plan out the wicked. You understand? The wicked that they're going to do the next day, the wicked that they're going to do in the next hour, so on and so forth. They have to sit down and plan it out. How are they going to do this thing? That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. Lest they bring upon thee a perpetual blot. Lest they bring upon thee a perpetual meaning, a what? A non, an everlasting blot, shame, reproach. You understand? Death unto you. Now, watch this. Let's get some examples. Give me Job 24, verse 15. Because I'm going here to explain what we read in Jeremiah 17, verse 9. When it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? The Lord knows it. So that's why in Mark, he's telling you what's coming from the heart of man. The desperate thoughts that come from the mind of man. Okay, read that. Job 24, verse 15. The book of Job 24, verse 15. The mm -hmm. eye open of the adulterer waited for the twilight. You see that thing? The eye also of the adulterer waited for the twilight. When it goes, when it's dark, that's when the, the adulterer pops up because he knows where he to go to deceive the house of what? Those silly women that are gonna with the silly women that are gonna be laden, that are laden with diverse lusts. He goes to those houses. You're not gonna spot him. At night, he be camouflaging himself. You can't tell. Is that soldier hair guy right there? Mm -hmm. That's that Negro right there. Read again. The book of Job 24, verse 15. Read. The eye also of the adulterer waited for the twilight. He waited for the twilight. Come on. Saying, no eye shall see me. Mm. And disguises his face. You see that thing? He be having sunglasses on, but it's at night. That's the eye of the adulterer. You understand? He's got many trains. Because he's thinking, don't nobody going to see me that I'm sleeping with a neighbor next door, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. That's why he waits for the twilight. What is that called? Desperation. That's the mind of the adulterer. You understand? That's why he's mentioning adulteries. Because in order for adultery to be committed, the man that has many trains or the woman that has many trains have to sit down and plan this thing out. You understand? Read on. In the dark, they dig through houses. You see that part right there? In the dark, they dig through houses. Watch this. Come on. Which they, which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. You see that part right there? Which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. Meaning during the day, what are they doing? They are wandering about hunting. They are hunting for that silly sister. For that silly sister with the Bible she don't study. That what? Guess what? He goes after that sister right there. That one with the low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I want that one right there. Go ahead. They know not the light. They don't know the light, which is the laws of God. But the point here says, in the dark, they dig through houses. Because that's when they go to houses of these silly women to dig their houses, if you know what the scriptures mean. You can read between the lines. Which they had marked for themselves in the daytime, they not, not the light. You understand? Because that's how they think. But he says, he says, which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Give me Sirach 9 and verse 7. Sirach 9 verse 7. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Look not round about thee in the streets of the city. What did the Bible say? Look not round about thee in the streets of the city. It says, look not around about thee in the streets of the city. Why? Come on. Neither wander thou in the solitary place thereof. It says, neither wander thou in the solitary places thereof. 
What are you wondering about? You understand? You're looking for holes. Jump up. Jump up to verse what? Jump up to verse 5. Because this is the key right here. Gaze not on a maid. Mm -hmm. That thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. Because a simp that is motivated by coochie and beauty and attention, guess what they will do? They will fall for those things that are precious in that sister. Read on. Verse 6, come on. Give not thy soul unto harlots. What did the Bible say? Give not thy soul unto harlots. Don't give your soul, don't give your substance, your honor to a whore. Read. That thou lose not thy inheritance. That you lose the kingdom. You understand? So this man is about what? This man is about looking for holes because guess what? He's motivated by what? What's with the things that are precious in those holes. Okay? So now, in order for him to find these holes, what is he going to be doing? Read verse 7 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Look not around about. Look not around about thee in the streets of the city. Neither wonder thou oh. in the solitary place thereof. Meaning what? Don't go out looking for holes. That's what he's saying. That's what the Lord is commanding us. But the eye of the adulterer, guess what? They will go out looking for those holes in the daytime. Go back to Job 24, verse 16. The book of Job, chapter 24, verses 16. Read. In the dark, they dig through houses. Read that again. The book of Job, chapter 24, verse 16. Read. In the dark, they dig through houses. In the dark, in the dark, they dig through houses. Houses of what? Hold this. Give me that in First uh, Timothy three, the six. Let's get it. First Timothy chapter three, verse six. Read that. First book of Timothy chapter three, verse six. No, no, Second Not Timothy. I'm sorry. Second, Second Timothy. Second Timothy three, verse six. Second book of Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For of the sort are they which creep into houses. They do what? Creep into houses. Job is saying the same thing here. In Job 24, verse 16, go back to Job 24, verse 16 again. Hold Timothy. We coming back. The book of Job 24, verse 16. Mm -hmm. In the dark, they dig through houses. They do what? They dig through houses. Now go back to 2 Timothy 3 verse 6 again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 6. Read. For of the sort are they which creep into houses. You see that part right there? It says, for, they, for of this sort are they which creep into houses. They dig through houses they creep into houses they dig through houses job and the apostle paul they are saying the exact same thing go ahead and lead captive silly woman laden with sins read led away with diverse lusts you see that part right there so these 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 the eye of the adulterer guess what they're doing in the daytime they are wondering about looking around what are they doing looking for holes silly women laden with what laden with sins they are looking for those silly women that are laden with sins what does that mean those sisters that are horny thirsty you understand she's a thirsty traveler because she's a thirsty traveler he knows where to find where the thirsty travelers are he knows where to find these thirsty travelers he knows where to find them okay so now when it says they dig through houses which they had marked for themselves in the daytime, because in Sirach chapter 9, verse 7, it tells you they'll go around looking for them. They know where the thirsty travelers are. Give me that in Sirach 26, real quick. Okay, Sirach 26 and verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 12. Read. She Open her mouth. 
as a thirsty traveler. You see that thing? She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. This mouth is talking about what? What's between her legs? The things that are precious in her. She will open her legs as a thirsty traveler. But the, the eye of the adulterer, he knows where to find these thirsty travelers. Okay, come on. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when mm. he had found a fountain. Read. And drink of every water near her. You see that thing right there? When he has found a fountain, the he is, the, uh, is the, uh, the, uh, the adulterer. That in the daytime, guess what he's doing? He says, wish they had much for themselves in the daytime. You understand? What is he looking for? He's looking for a thirsty traveler. The simple sister. The shameless daughter. Go ahead. Come on. By every hedge, she will sit down. No, by every hedge, will she sit down? Go ahead. By every hedge, will she sit down? Read. And open her quiver against every arrow. She will open her legs against every penis. That's what he's saying right there. So the, the adulterer, he knows exactly where to find them hopes. He knows where to find them. You understand? Because that's his motive. His motive is coochie, beauty, and attention. You understand? He will belittle himself to find that coochie. doesn't matter what type of coochie it looks like. He don't care. Okay? That's a simp. You understand? Go back to Job. Go back to 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 6. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 6. Read. For thought are they which creep into houses mm -hmm. and lead captive silly women laden with sins. Read. Led away with diverse lusts. You see that thing? Because this, these silly women, guess what? They are thirsty travelers. He says, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Now they have more lusts, that more lust demons that have been added unto them. Because of what? Because they are thirsty and he is a, he is looking for what? Thirsty travelers. Okay? So now, go back to Job 24 verse 16. Job 24 verse 16. The book of Job 24 verse 16. Read. The dark, they dig through houses. They creep into houses. Come on. Which they had mocked for themselves in the daytime. They are violating the law, the commandment in Sirach 9 verse 7. He says, look not around, right round about thee. You understand? Looking for these holes in the streets. Don't be doing that. So the eye of the adulterer will do that because what is the state of his mind? Desperate. The state of his mind is desperate. So he don't see right from wrong. He's a simp. Okay, read that again, verse 16. The book of Job, chapter 24, verse 16. Come on. In the dark, they dig through houses, mm -hmm. which they had mocked for themselves in the daytime. Read. They know not the light. They know not the law. Give me that in Proverbs 6.23. They know not the law. They know not the law. Proverbs 6.23, to prove that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. Come for on. the command, the lamp, mm -hmm. and the law is light. Go back to Mark now, chapter 7. No, no, go back to Job 24, verse 16 again. The book of Job, chapter 24, verse 16. In the dark, they dig through houses, mm -hmm. which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. Come on. They know not the light. They know not the law. They know not the law. What law is this talking about? Thou shalt not commit adultery. They don't know that law. And they do, they know it, that they don't want to apply it. You understand? Now go back to Mark 7, 21 now. Now we have a better understanding of what just came out. Okay? Mark 7, verse 21. Read that. The book of Mark. Chapter 7, verse 21. Read. For from within, out of the heart of men, Mm -hmm. Proceed evil thoughts. Proceed evil thoughts out of the mind of men. 
the mind that is desperately wicked proceed what? Evil thoughts. Proceed evil thoughts. Come on. Adulteries. Adulteries. So now when he's saying adultery, I just took you through steps to give an example of what it means when it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Because when you are desperate, guess what you're going to do? Everything that we just read in Job, in Sirach, you understand? In 2 Timothy, guess what? You're going to do everything that we just read. You're not going to care whether she's a midget. You don't care. Give me that in Sirach 23. Sirach 23, verse 17. Watch this. Sirach 23, verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 23, verse 17. Mm -hmm. All bread is sweet to a hopemonger. You see that thing? So it's letting you know it's not talking about actual loaf or brown. No, no. It says all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. So it's letting you know what the bread is. The bread is the thirsty traveler. Read that again, verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 23, verse 17. Read. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Mm -hmm. He will not live off till he dies. He's not going to stop whoremongering until he drops dead, catches a disease, and he dies. Read. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying, Actually, that's in his mm, Just read verse 17. Read verse 17 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 23, verse 17. Mm -hmm. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Read. He will not live off till he dies. The key of, the, of this verse that I want to bring out is the fact that it says all bread, all bread. It doesn't matter what type of woman she is. She's married, she's sick, she's a grandma, she's a child, teenager, high school, prime. He don't give a hoot. He don't give a hoot. He's going to go for it. You understand? It don't matter if she's sick. If they say, no, she's got the clap, he will go for it. Because he's not going to live off till he dies. That's how desperate the mind of a homonger is. The mind of a homonger is very desperate. You understand? So that's why it says, now, now go back to Mark 721 once again. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Read. For from within, out of the heart of men, Proceed evil thoughts. Proceed evil thoughts. Go ahead. Adulteries. Stop right there. What did it say? Adulteries. Adulteries. So what I wanted to show you is the level of desperation that goes on in the mind of a simp. You understand? The mind of a simp, the desperation, I'm just giving you one. You know, we can have a whole class on these three alone. You understand? Adulteries. Fornication. So adultery... Fornication, I want to deal with that. Fornication. Give me that in uh, First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's start with verse 2. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 2. First book of Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 2. Mm -hmm. for, you know, for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Go ahead. For this is the will of God. For this is the will if, of God. Come on. Even your sanctification. Even your holiness, your sanctification, your cleansing. Read. That ye should abstain from fornication. Yeah, you should abstain from fornication. So meaning stay away. Repent. You understand? Come on. Remember it says fornications. Read. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. So now, notice the words that the Apostle Paul is using. He's not saying, it says, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should. He's saying that you should. Because guess what? Because they should know this already. You understand? It's not it's many, what, what is he saying? Why is he saying the word should? No, because it's nothing new to them. It's not, a, it's not a new thing. So that's why it says that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know. 
Meaning you should know this already. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying right here. Read it again. Verse 4. First book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 4. That really? every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. You see that thing? It says every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. But remember what we read in Job 24, verse 16. It says they know not the light. They know it, but they choose not to do it. That's why the Apostle Paul is saying you should know this. So you know it, do it, do it. You know better, you do better. You understand? So they choose not to. Going out of their way because the mind is what? Desperately wicked. Okay, come on. That's my parents, sir. Verse 4 again. First Thessalonians 4 and 4. First book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 4. That Ray. every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. In sanctification and honor. You, he says you should know how to possess your vessel. Your vessel, you must know how to possess it. Watch this. Give me that in first. Uh, give me Romans 6 real quick. Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. This is how you know what, this is how you, you, you should know how to possess your vessel in sanctification and honor. Watch this. Romans 6, verse 13. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 13. Read. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. That's a commandment. He says, do not yield, don't give your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Your members talk about what? Your vessel, your body. You understand? You must know how to possess it. How do you do that? You don't yield your body as an instrument of unrighteousness unto sin. You don't give yourself to what? To a thirsty traveler, to a whore, because that's what simps do. Okay, come on. But yield yourselves unto God. But you see that thing? But yield yourself unto God. Give yourself up to the most High God. Read on. Meaning what? You submit yourself to the role that God gave you when it comes to these commandments. Read. As those that are alive from the dead. Mm -hmm. Because you are you're brought from the dead. You were resurrected from the dead. How were you resurrected from the dead? You were given God's commandments. Read. And you... As those that are as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now he's telling you, you see how to possess your vessel in sanctification and honor. You see what it says, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Meaning your body must be an instrument of righteousness. You must channel, you must be a vessel that the Mosa God will channel his righteousness in. The Lord mustn't channel his anger through you because get then what? Then you're doomed. Don't nobody can fix you. Okay? Watch this. Let's go back. Say, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 4 again. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 4. Read what you got. 1 book of Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 4. Come on. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. We just read it in Romans 6, 13. Come on. Not in the last of concupiscence. You see that thing? He says, do not. You must possess your vessel in sanctification and honor and not in the last of concupiscence. Concupiscence is evil sexual desires. Strong sexual desires, strong evil sexual desire. That's concupiscence. That's not a regular Negro word. Read that again, verse 5. First book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Not in the last of concupiscence. Come on. Even as the Gentiles which know not God. You see that thing? It says, not in the last of concupiscence. Because what were all these, these spirits that we're reading here that the Lord sings? What spirit are we reading here? Fornication. Remember, it says fornications. Okay? So, not in the last of concupiscence, because when you are, a, when you are in the midst of fornication, guess what you are in the midst of? 
concupiscence, evil concupiscence, evil strong sexual desires. You understand? Okay, watch this. Now go back to Mark now. Mark 7, read verse 21 again. Mark 7, verse 21. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. For from within, out of the hearts of men, proceed evil thoughts. Read. Adulterous. Fornication. Read. Fornication. Murders. Come. So now, it says, for adulteries, fornications, murders. So what I want to show you is that I'm just dealing with adulteries, fornications. Now jump down to verse 23. So we can understand what Christ, uh, what is what is Christ tell, teaching us here? What type of spirits these are? Verse 23 now, come on. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 23. All uh -huh. these evil things come from within. They come from within. From within where? The mind. They come from within your mind. That's why it says within. Where? Your mind. Okay, come on. Come from within. Mm -hmm. And defile the man. And do what? Defile the man. And defile the man. You see that part right there? And they will defile you. They defile you spiritually. They defile you physically also. Not only are you spiritually defiled, but you're mentally defiled as well and physically defiled. You understand? Because they are coming from your mind, these things. They are coming from the, the mind that is desperately wicked. Now go to Jeremiah 17 verse 9. I'm just setting up, I'm setting the scene for you. Okay? I'm just giving those as examples what we read in Mark 7, 21. Now go to Jeremiah 17 verse 9 again. Come on, the come book on. Of Chapter 17, verse 9. Read. The heart is deceitful above all things. Mm. And desperately wicked. Who read. can know it? Who can know it? The Lord knows it. That's what we read in Mark 7, 21. The Lord knows it. How The Lord knows how desperately wicked our minds is. You understand? That's why he commanded us to keep his commandments to get our mind right. Okay? Watch this. Now give me the book of Jeremiah. Give me Jeremiah 23, 25. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 25. So the second characteristics of a simp, he is a dreamer. You understand? Pipe dreams. He just daydreams. Don't nothing come to reality. Don't, no, no. He is a daydreamer. He dreams. He doesn't do nothing. He just dreams. Jeremiah 23, verse 25. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 25. I have Wait. heard what the prophets say. That prophesy lies in my name. Say you see that thing that prophesy lies in the name of the Lord. Go ahead. Saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Mm -hmm. I have dreamed, I have dreamed, because that's all they do. They just dream. They don't apply nothing. They just think upon things, but they don't apply. Read the scripture again, verse 25. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 25. Mm -hmm. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, say, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. I have dreamed, I have dreamed. That's what Martin Luther was doing before he got his mind right. Read on, verse 26. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Read. Yea. They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. You see where the deceit is coming from? It's coming from their dreams. So what is the dream? The dream, the, the, the dreams is what? Is the deceit of their own mind. Those dreams that they are spitting out, that is the deceit of their own mind. Because remember what we read in Jeremiah 17 verse 9. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The mind of a dreamer is what? Is full of deceit of his own mind. That's the mind of a dreamer. That's the mind state of a dreamer. You understand? Is full of what? Deceit of his own mind. His own wicked imaginations. And he lived by those wicked imaginations. You understand? Read that part again. And they are the prophets of what? Start, read that verse again. Just the bottom precept. I just want the bottom precept. Yea, they are prophets 
of the of the deceit of the own heart. They are the prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Meaning what? They are cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Watch this. Give me Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 3. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 9 and 3. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 3. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. That there is one event unto all. Yea. Come on. Also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. The heart. You see that thing? The heart is going back to that mind again. The mind that is desperately wicked is as also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. When something is full, that means everything that is in that mind is nothing but evil. That's why he's using the word fool there. Go ahead. And madness is in their heart. You see that thing? And what? Live. And madness is in their heart. While they and live. madness, and madness is in their heart. Madness is in their mind, meaning they are crazy. You understand? Go back to uh, Jeremiah 23, verse 26 again. Jeremiah 23, verse 26, once again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 26. Mm -hmm. How long shall this be in the hearts of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. You see that thing? They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Meaning they sit down, they think upon evil because their mind is full of evil. How can you think about good when your mind is full of evil? It's impossible. You can't do it. Okay? That's why they will profit. They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Politics is like that. Politics is like that. Christianity is like that. And the dreamer, that, that simp who's a dreamer, you understand? A dreamer will not do nothing. You understand? A dreamer will say, I want a job. But when you examine his actions pertaining to him getting a job, his actions don't fit what he's saying. So what is that? What, that, what is that? That's a dreamer right there. He's not realistic. There's no sense of realism in his mind. You understand? That's a dreamer. Okay? I want to have wisdom, but he don't study. That's a simp. He's a dreamer. You understand? I want to own my own business, but he's not working hard. You understand? When it's time to sleep, he goes to bed. You understand? You, you, can, you, can, you can behave like an employee, but yet you say you want a business. That's a dreamer. Because if you're an entrepreneur, guess what? If you want to be an entrepreneur, you're not going to sleep eight hours. You're going to sleep more. You're, gonna, you're not going to sleep eight hours. You're going to be awake. For, you're going to work more hours. Because guess what you are doing? You are putting, you are investing in the business that you want to go into. But if you're acting like an employee, but yet you want to be an entrepreneur, that's not going to happen. What is that called? A dreamer. Go back to Sirach 9. I mean, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 3 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 3. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 3. Mm -hmm. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. Come on. That there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. Mm -hmm. And madness is in their heart while they live. Read. And after that, they go to the dead. So now what you want to see here is, watch this. Hmm. Read on, verse 4. Watch verse 4. Some heavy stuff right here. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. If you are joined to the living, meaning what? You have a sound mind. You are not a dreamer. You don't have pipe dreams. You don't daydream about stuff. There's no fairy tales and gumdrops in your mind. You understand? Read that part again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Read. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. That's some heavy. Whoa! That's some hammer time right there. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Could you imagine that? So let's examine now. The nations are dogs, right? 
We are the lions. The nations, they are more alive than we as a nation. It says, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. That's some heavy insult right there. Because King Solomon was looking at the nations around him, and they were what? They were progressing. There was, there was a, some sense in their mind. And he was the dead lion at this point. So he's telling you, he's, he's, he basically is, is, is giving you an account of what was happening prior before he wrote this. The book of Ecclesiastes. Okay? Watch this. Hmm. Read verse 5. That's some beautiful stuff right here. Okay? Read it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 5. For the living know that they shall die. For the living know that they shall die. The living know that they're going to die. This living here is talking about what? The living dogs. He's talking about those living dogs. They know that they're going to die. But the what? But the dead know not anything. Mm -hmm. Neither have they any more a reward. Put it on. For the memory of them is forgotten. You see that thing? For the memory of them is forgotten. Don't nobody remember them because they didn't do. They just dreamt about it. They just thought upon it but they never put actions behind what they were saying or what they were dreaming about. Their actions never followed behind their dreams. So they just had pipe dreams in their head. You understand? Read that again, verse 5. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 5. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Mm -hmm. Neither have they any more reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. So you see that part when it says, but the dead know not anything. The dead lion don't know anything. They don't know if they are alive. They don't know if they're going to die. You understand? In their mind, they just live in this fairy world. That's our people in Christianity. They just live in this fairy world. Yeah. You understand? They live in the fairy, in the fairy pipe dream world that have been created for them by the slave master. You understand? So in Christianity, you have, uh, you have dreamers. They hope for the kingdom, but they don't do anything to what? To, they don't do the work to get the kingdom. You understand? A dreamer is like that. They dream big. They want to do stuff, but they, they, want to, they want to have stuff. Let me do They don't want to do stuff. They want to have stuff, but they don't do it to get it. You understand? Here you are, you want to be a wife. No, 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 no. Let me switch gears because I'm still dealing with the simps, man. There's simp women too. I'm going to deal with that in the future, near future. The brother here you are, you want to be a husband. Okay? But you are not examining yourself. You are not learning. You are not seeking counsel on how to be one. We have a, I have a lot of experience in marriage. But if you want to get married, you understand, you will ask questions that pertain to marriage when you're dealing with your spouse and so forth. But you want to be one, but you're not, you're not seeking counsel. You're, you're to be guided on how to deal with your marriage and all that. Guess what? You are a dreamer. You are a dreamer. That marriage is not going to be successful. You want to be a soldier, but you're, doing, you're not doing the work of a soldier. You want to be a soldier, but you're not doing the work of a soldier. That's a dreamer. That's a dreamer. You understand? You must be through your works. We're going to, that brother right there, that's a soldier right there. You understand? That brother right there, that's a soldier right there. We can tell that's a soldier because of the what? The works behind that. That the works that show that that brother is a soldier or what? Aspiring to be one. You understand? He's not a dreamer. He doesn't have pipe dreams. He's not unrealistic about, about stuff. He calculates, he has goals. Sims don't have goals, as you, you, you saw the video. Sims don't have goals. Their goals are coochie and, and, and beauty, you understand? And their dreams that they live on. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Deuteronomy now. Deuteronomy 28, 28. Remember it says, uh, go, you know what? Jump up, to, jump up to verse 3. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 3 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 3. 
This is an evil among all among all things that are done under the sun. Come on. That there is one event unto all. Mm. Yea. Also the heart of the sons of men is full of the evil. And madness is in their heart while they live. Madness is in their heart. How did that madness enter into the mind of these men? How did madness enter into the mind of the simp? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. This is how that madness, the dreams, you understand, the fairy tales entered into the mind of a simp. Okay, Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, 28, verses 28. Read. The Lord shall smite thee with madness mm. and blindness and astonishment of heart. You see what the Lord says he's going to do to your mind? He says the Lord shall smite. The Lord is going to judge you with madness. You understand? You'll be smitten with madness. He says the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness. The dreamer doesn't see the, the, flaws, the flaws in this dream that he's got. The dreamer don't see the flaws in the dream because when you challenge the dream, the dreamer, guess what? The dreamer will hold it against you. Why? Because in his mind is perfect. You understand? Don't mess it up. Don't bring me to the, don't bring me to earth. I want to be on cloud nine. Don't bring me to earth. You understand? That's a dreamer because the dreamer is emotional. So read that again, verse 28. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 28. Read. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Read. And blindness. And astonishment of heart. And astonishment of mind. Meaning your mind, you're going to be confused. Astonishment. You're going to be confused all the time. You understand? You're not going to get it. The dreamer don't get it. Okay. So what we're reading here, that the Lord will do this thing. It says, and madness is in their mind. Who put madness into the mind of a simp? The Lord did that thing. Why? Because a simp, he is a dreamer. He is not realistic. His thought process is not, he does not, he does not have a sound mind. He doesn't have a sound mind. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Hosea 9 verse 7. The book of Hosea chapter 9 verse 7. The days of visitation are come. The days of re recompense are come. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. The days of recompense is talk about payback, judgment, punishment that the Lord will bring upon this earth and upon the children of Israel. Read on. Israel shall know it. Israel the shall prophet. know it. We're going to know this thing. We're going to know it says Israel shall know it. That judgment is, is what is already at hand. It's going on. Go ahead. The prophet is a fool. The what? The prophet is a fool. The prophet is dumb as hell. That's what the Lord is saying. The prophet is a fool. He's dumb. Okay. Hold this. Give me the book of Luke 24. The prophet is a fool. Luke 24 verse 25. We're coming back here. So don't close Jose. Luke 24 verse 25. The book of Luke chapter 24 verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. He says to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So he says, O fools and slow of heart. Meaning what? They are fools and they are slow. They are slow bellies. They are dumb. That's what Christ was telling them. O fools and dumb as hell to believe all that the prophets have spoken because they didn't believe what the prophets have spoken because he had risen at this point. You understand? The spiritual, the prophet is a fool because they don't believe the things that the prophet have said. Go back to where was it now? Hosea 9 verse 7. The book of Hosea chapter 9 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Days of visitations are come. Read. The recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. Mm -hmm. The spiritual man is mad. Do you see that part right there? The spiritual man is mad. How is the spiritual man mad? The Lord has smitten him with madness. That's why now 
they have what? They have strong delusions. They believe their own lies. They cook up lies, they cook up dreams, and they believe upon those dreams. This is deceit of their own mind. But they don't see, that's why it says, the Lord shall smite you with madness and blindness. You are even blinded to the dreams that you are cooking up. Go ahead. For the multitude of the iniquity and the great hatred. You see that thing? For the, the reason why the prophet is a fool, the reason why the spiritual man is mad is because of the multitude of our sins. You understand? And the great hatred. What is the hatred? Because the, the reason why the spiritual man is mad, they says they have great hatred. For what? Give me Isaiah chapter 30 verse 9. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 9. Watch this. The book of Isaiah is you know what? 30. Read verse 12. Read verse 12 for me. I think God, that's what I want. Verse 12. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. He says, because you do what? Because ye despise this word. Because ye despise this word. That's why the spiritual man is mad. That's why they cook up this deceit of their own wicked mind. Because the Lord has smitten them with madness. Now they just have pipe dreams. They just daydream. There's no sense of realism in their mind. You understand? No, no, there's none, none whatsoever. You understand? You can't say, I want, mm, I want to be a, I want to be a leader in Israel. Yet, you are not doing, you can't even handle a simple timetable. You can't handle a simple timetable that you can put together and follow. You can't even follow that. Were you ready to be a leader in Israel? No, but you believe it. You understand? The deceit, your mind is so deceitful and desperately wicked that you will be convinced that you're gonna be, you are our one. But you can't follow a simple timetable. You can't. Simple, basic timetable, you cannot follow that thing. That's what we're reading here. You understand? It says, because he despised this word. What is the, because the lack of application, what is this called in the Bible? Hatred. Hatred towards who? The heavenly, the, the heavenly father, the majesty on high. That's some heavy stuff that's coming out here. Watch this. Give me, go back to Hosea. Hosea chapter 9. Okay, Hosea 9, verse 9. Watch this. The book of Hosea, chapter 9, verse 9. Mm -hmm. They have deeply corrupted themselves. They have what? Deeply, they have deeply corrupted themselves. They have deeply corrupted themselves. How did they corrupt themselves? because of the hatred they have towards the laws of God. Read on. As in the days of Gibeah. Gibeah, go ahead. Gibeah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. Read. He will, he will visit their sins. That's why it says, Israel shall know it in verse seven. It says, Israel shall know it. How are they going to know it? Because the Lord, he says, he will visit their sins. The Lord going to pay you back. You understand? He's going to pay you back for breaking his commandments. He will pay you back. Watch this. Give me, give me 2 Thessalonians. Okay, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. You understand? Dreamers, they don't have any sense of realism. They don't have, they don't make sound judgments. The stuff, the decision, their decision making process doesn't make any sense. Okay, that's a dreamer. Here you are, you, you want to, um, you, you, you want to also, you want to have some kind of uh, savings, okay? But you can't even send 10 rand. You can't save 10 bucks. Because savings does not necessarily mean you must have a lot of money to save. No, you can start with 20 bucks a month if that's what you can afford. Okay, in five months, it will be 100 rand. You might think that's a small thing. No, that's not a small thing. You understand? 
But guess what? That you putting that 20 rand, what it teaches, it teaches you discipline. But a dreamer don't think like that. A dreamer, they just want the big lump sum. That's the dream. How are you going to get the big lump sum? Mm, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. What is the plan? What plan did you put in place for you to be able to get the lump sum? You hear crickets. Because they didn't sit down to plan this thing out, to evaluate the risks of their plan. No. It's just like, boom, let's go. No, 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 no. Read verse 9 again. The book goes. Read yeah, chapter 9, verse 9. They have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Kippur. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their he will sins. will visit their sins. Now give me 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. Read that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Read. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. That you might be saved, that you may be delivered from what? From your evil thoughts, from your dreams, from your pipe dreams and daydreamings. You understand? Because you receive not the love of the truth, you're not going to be delivered from these pipe dreams that you've got. You understand? From these fairy tales that you have in your head. Read that again, verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So with all deceivableness, remember what King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 9. He says, this is an evil this is, an, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. You understand? There's one even unto all. And the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness is in their heart while they live. So now, while they live. So you see what the Apostle Paul is saying here? It says, with all deceivableness, with all deceit. Deceit of what? Deceit of their own mind. Like we read in Jeremiah 23, 26. Okay? Of unrighteousness, meaning of sin in them that perish. Meaning you're going to die spiritually and physically. Because they receive not the love of the truth. That they might be delivered from what? The deceit and unrighteousness of their mind. Okay, come on. Verse 11. Second book of Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. You see what he's saying? So he says, because of verse 10, he says, the Lord will send them strong delusions. A strong delusion because they, we have deeply corrupted ourselves, the Lord is saying. So a simp will deeply corrupt themselves. And when they deeply corrupt themselves, guess what? The Lord is the one that will allow those demons to jump on that mind because that mind is desperately wicked. Now the mind is, has no protection. You don't have a helmet on. It's open season for demons, okay? Because they receive not the love of the truth. The Lord says, okay, because you love this deceivable, this deceit of sin in your mind, guess what? I'm going to send strong delusion into that mind that is full of deceit and sin. And you're going to believe a lie. I'm going to make you crazy. Yeah, I'm going to make you crazy. A simp is blinded to that. A simp don't see that. Okay? A simp doesn't see that thing. A simp, guess what a simp? A simp will realize, mm, I don't know how to manage money. Okay, my wife does. Guess what? Let your wife handle the, the finances there. Because you are a simp when it comes to money. A simp is blinded because what? A simp is full of pride. So, mm -mm. Now I'm going to handle it. You understand? But your wife can do it. And vice versa. Okay? You know, the sister, the, 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 I'm going to just touch on the sisters for a second. The sister, she, she says, no, I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Okay? The sister don't take counsel. The sister don't apply the counsel. Okay? The sister does not uh, uh, study. He don't, she don't study. But she says, no, no, I want to be a wife. You want to be a wife, sis? Mm -hmm. Okay. Says, but your conduct, your mouth, 
your speech. How you gonna get a husband like that? You understand? You are stubborn. You don't wanna follow on anything. You don't wanna be told what to do, so on and so forth. How you gonna get a? How you gonna get a lord? Somebody that is gonna lord over you. So that is simp because they are not realistic. They have a pipe dream. They have a fairy fairy world where they just see themselves being married, but they don't. There's no steps in between in between for them to prepare themselves for marriage. They don't do that. Sister don't know how to cook. Sister can't clean. Sister can't wash her clothes. You understand? Sister that can 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 deal with her hygiene issues, as an example. You understand? There's a stench that don't want to go away. Sister don't seek help. You see the, those type of things? Listen, but you want to be a wife. Hmm. You want to be a mother? So your children are going to follow what? Your egg poor example? No. The young sisters in the truth, they're going to follow your, your poor example? No. But you want to be a wife and a sister in the truth? That's not going to happen. That's a simp. That they don't have a mind, they don't have, they are not realistic. Okay, here we go. Here's a brother. A brother says, No, I want to be a wife, I want to be a husband. I want to get married. Fine. You want to get married? You have a job. But does your job can it be able to take care of you? Are you your job right now? Can it take care of you? Do you are you struggling with month end issues and all that? Yes. How what is the degree? The degree is huge, but you want a wife? Are you kidding? That's a simp. Because guess what? You gonna the two of you are gonna be two simps starving. Why? Because the brother don't think, hmm, maybe I should get another job. Hmm, let me see. Maybe I should apply for another one and a, a, a better job that will pay better. You're not gonna do that. You know why? Because a simp is lazy. A simp dreams up, but they are lazy to what? To put actions behind what they are saying, what they want to achieve. That's a simp. But sisters that are thirsty, they love those dreams, those fairy tales. You understand that? They love those things. Brother be promising them the moon, the stars, and the holy, the, the, the third heaven. You understand? Now you are married. None of those things come true, but you get what? You married the idea of the life that you want, that you wish to have because you are covetous, you are not realistic. And now that you, you, because guess what? You were listening to those things, but at the same time, you're looking at his big feet. No, he's got big feet, yeah. Okay. He's got big feet. I like his hair. You understand? We're going to have babies like this. Mm, that's a simp. Two simps. You understand? Because that, there's no realism in what they are saying. Read the thing again, verse 11. What's my parents, sir? Second Thessalonians 2, verse 11. Second book of Thessalonians 2, verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You see that thing? God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So a sim doesn't have goals. You ask them five years from now, what is the, what is the goal five, five, five years from now? What is your goal? Okay? That's, that's what you must ask us. Ask. You sisters, you proving these brothers, ask them five years from now, what is your goal? What is the what is what are you hoping to achieve in five years' time? What is the plan? And if there is one, if if what, let's say you want to achieve X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm, okay. So what are you doing in order for you to what to make sure that you can secure the 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 goal that you want to the, the goal the, the goal that you have? What are you doing now? to prove that actually you are working towards that. What are you doing? And give me details, give me specifics. If you cannot produce none of that, you are a simp. Mm -hmm. You are a dreamer. 10 years from now, what is the plan you have? No, I don't got none. I don't know, no. You, you have, no, you see me, I'm just about the here and now. I don't think about the future. That's a simp. Because what he's telling you is that I don't have the I don't have the stones to sit down or the discipline to sit down to plan out the things that I need to achieve and what amount of work I need to put in to achieve those things. 
That's what he's telling you. You know what he's telling you? He's telling you, I'm a bum. That's what he's telling you. That's a bum right there. You understand? But he's going to disguise it with the big dreams that he, mm -mm, just keep it simple. Give me your plan for five years from now. Short term. What are your short term goals? What are you doing to achieve those goals? Long term goals. What are you doing to achieve those long term goals? They cannot tell you nothing. They are rambling and all of that. And if they do say those goals, ask them for specifics about these goals. What are you doing? No, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. How long is it going to take you to do it? Mm, uh, I'm not sure. Guess what? He's trying to think up stuff in real time. You have a simp on your hand. You see that thing? Because you, you, that lets you know that you're not going to be able to know how to plan for your family. You're not going to know, okay, we're going to have, when we have to, we, are, we need to plan for the future. You need to be planning for the children that are don't, you don't even have yet. You need to plan for the house that you don't even have yet. You need to plan for the wife that you don't even have yet. Because you're not planning for, you're not planning for a girlfriend. You are planning for a wife. So your job is supposed to plan for a wife. You must plan for a house. Plan for the children that's going to come for. Those decisions have to be made now. You need to know now what you need to, because you know you're going to have children and all that. You're going to get married and so forth. Guess what you must do? You must do your due diligence. Because brothers don't do that. That's a simp. That's a dreamer. Okay? It's getting hot up in here. Mm. Give me Jude verse 8. Watch this. Give me the book of Jude verse 8. Jude verse 8. Watch this. You see the apostle Jude? He was a heavy apostle. Heavy, heavy apostle. Okay, take time. Read the book of Jude. Read verse 6. No, no, verse 8. I'm sorry. Verse 8. You know what? Start at verse 4. We're going to read 4 and then we're going to jump to verse 8. Watch this. The book of Jude, verse 4. Uh -huh. For there are certain men crept in unawares. 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 Meaning what? We are not aware of them, the Lord is saying. Okay, come on. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. He says, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. The condemn, the judgment that's coming. Go ahead. Come on. Ungodly men. Ungodly men. These are ungodly men. These men that have crept in unawares, they are ungodly men. Read. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Mm -hmm. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so he says, these are ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Meaning what? Evil sexual deviancy. Turning the grace of our Lord into sexual deviancy. Denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So these are ungodly men. What is running the show? The coochie and the booty. That's what's running the show in their mind. That's what says ungodly men. What is the, what is the, ungodly, the ungodliness? What is their ungodliness? Lasciviousness lasciviousness evil strong sexual desires lasciviousness okay read verse eight now watch this so they are not about this so they fit the description what we read in mark 7 21 adulteries fornications all these evil things come from within the mind you understand and defile the man verse eight now watch this come on likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile what the type flesh. Of dream? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Read that again. Verse, read it slow for me. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 8. Come on. Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers mm -hmm. defile the flesh. You see that part right there? Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh. They are filthy, meaning what? Filthy dreamers. When you calculate the dreams, the things, the plans they've got, when you really examine it, it doesn't make any sense. It's not computing. You understand? You ask them about the goals and what goals do you have? Crickets. Because if you cannot handle a simple timetable, I don't, I don't care if you can put one together. Follow the timetable. You can't follow it, you don't got goals. Because yes, you, in your mind, you believe you've got, but when you, if I have to examine it, 
What are you doing to achieve this goal? I know I'm going to find some, a whole lot of BS coming out. Yes, simple like that. Why? Because these are filthy dreamers. The stuff that is in the mind, they don't have a vision. You understand? They have no vision. Give me that in uh, Proverbs 29, verse 18. Watch this. Because when these scriptures come out, the most like God is giving you the vision. But because you don't apply, you don't see the vision. Okay? Watch this. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Watch this thing. The book of Proverbs 29, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Where there is no vision, the people perish. You see that thing? Where there is no vision, the people perish. That's some, heavy, that's some heavy stuff right there. Read the next part of this verse. I want to show you something. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Be happy in the vision that is God because he's keeping the law. The law is what's going to give you the vision. You keeping God's commandments, you're going to have the vision. Because the, law, the most high God reveals the vision and that's written in the Bible. That's why not right now there's things that are happening in the body. Where is that coming from? The, that's the vision of, of the most high. The, the, the projects that brothers and sisters are working with, that's the vision of the most high God. You understand? It says, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Because you're going to be happy because you understand the vision. And you are doing, what are you doing on the ground? You are moving things on the ground to make sure that vision comes to pass. That's how you think. The leaders think like that. You what? You'll be able to identify specific talents in specific brothers and sisters, and you assign them to specific tasks. And guess what? Their job is to accomplish it. But guess what? You can identify a skill in a brother and say, bro, I need you to handle this office, and they'll be slothful in it. That's why we always must pray for laborers. We must not pray for the sloth. No, we, play, we pray for laborers to come into this truth to help us to get the work done. Okay, watch this. Now, go back to Jude verse 8. Jude verse 8. The book of Jude. Verse 8. Uh-huh. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They defile the flesh. They defile the mind. Read. Despise dominion. They hate instruction and order. Do the timetable and follow it. He says they despise dominion. Command. Read. And speak evil of dignities. They complain about following the timetable. Something simple like that. They complain about studying. They complain about seeking counsel. They are murmuring and they might not say it out loud, but their actions dictate what they are saying. You understand? So that's why it says, likewise, also these filthy dreamers. Because remember now, let's get some context. Read verse 7. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Even in Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in, in like manner. Read. Giving them giving themselves over to fornication. Stop right there. Giving themselves over. They de deliberately went out of their way to give themselves over, to hand themselves over to fornication. How do you do that? How do you hand yourself over to fornication? It's because you are bound with that sin. You don't want to let it go. You can't stop masturbating. You understand? Because you are handing yourself over to fornication and going after what? And going after strange flesh. And going after strange flesh. Go ahead, watch this. Are set forth for an example. They are set forth for an example. Read on. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Damnation. You see that thing, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Because Sodom and Gomorrah, when they gave themselves over to fornication, what was, what was the, the pipe dream behind the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah? Sodom and Gomorrah, the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah was what? Men wanted to, men was dealing with other men. Women was dealing with other women. So now when a woman is dealing with a woman, can a child come out from that? No. Can a family be built from that? No. 
So those are filthy dreamers because their dreams are not, they don't have, there's no realism in their mind because how did they come to, into this world? Did they come into this, in this world when a mother and mother got together? No. So the filthiness of their dreams is that they don't understand how they got into this world. Mother and father slept together and they came out. Now they go against how they even came out, how they came into this world. They are going against that. Men dealing with men. You see that thing? Men lusting after other men. That's a filthy dreamer. Because they are, they are, that, that, there's, no reali there's no realism in that mind. There's no vision. Because what are you hoping to achieve out of this? Because the most I has put in us to have a family. You understand? To have children. So when that thing comes, guess what they do? They go to the adoption agencies to adopt children. Two men raising one child. Raising a, raising a, 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 a child. That's a pipe dream. You understand? When the child grows up, because they don't think about the future. They only just think about, no, we, are, we want a child. Is it about the child? No, it's about them. Now the child grows up because they don't think ahead. They have no vision. So now imagine, now the child is what? The child is entering adolescent stage. Now the child is confused now. Now the child is going to have psychological hangups because the child now is going to be sexually confused because from a young age, he's growing up with these two men or she's growing up with these two men in the house. You understand? Sword fighting at night. Now, guess what she's going to do? Now she's going, hmm, I like that girl. She's cute. Feel the dreamers because these are pipe dreams. Likewise, again, you understand? Here you are, you want a wife. You don't eat healthy. You don't exercise. You understand? You cannot hold, you cannot discipline yourself to follow a simple routine on a timetable, but you're going to run the house with your wife and your children? Are you kidding? Well, I mean, really, you, uh, you have to think about this stuff. You cannot deal with a simple thing as put a routine together on a timetable and follow it, but you mean to tell me you're going to be able to take care of your wife and children? Another spirit in your house that's going to be in your face 24 hours a day and you're a child that pops up, which is inevitable, it will happen. But you, 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 cannot, you cannot follow a simple instruction on a timetable. Eat healthy. Guess what? Put a meal plan together. Have a meal plan. You know, on this, this week, this is what I'm going to eat. What is the, what is that, is my diet, is it balanced? Am I eating, am I having a balanced diet? No, you're not having a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. But guess what? When you get sick, you are surprised. Why are you sick? Hmm. Are you eating healthy? What, you, what, is, what is your diet? Mm, uh, I think you see that thing, but yet you say you getting your, your house in order. It starts with you. How are you going to do that? You can't because that's a pipe dream you've got. You don't have a gold. And if you do have a gold, what is the details? What, what are the, what is, let me see the blueprint. Yes, you have a gold. Fine. Let me see the blueprint. How are you going to get from a point A to point B? If point B if the distance between B and A doesn't happen, what is the contingency? Do you have a contingency plan? What is the escape route? What is the risk management uh, uh, strategies that you put together to manage risk in case this happened, in case that happened, this and this, this and this and that and the third? How are you going to deal with that stuff? Mm, I'm not sure. I don't know. A dreamer. So you mean to tell me you're going to handle a wife? You're going to handle children? You're going to handle, more importantly, the nation of Israel? Hell no, that's not going to happen. You can barely get your shoes polished, but you're going to handle the, the wife. You're going to handle the nation of Israel. I mean, let's really think about this stuff. You see that thing? You can't. But because you are not, you don't have the sense of reality, guess what? You just think, mm, ah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll, we'll see in the future what's going to happen. No, 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 no. The Bible is saying where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Because you want to be happy because you keep the law. The law, the most High God will expose the vision unto you. And the vision must be what? Must be 
implemented. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 34, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 34, verse 1. Read. The hope of a man void of understanding are vain and false. Mm. And dreams lift up fools. You see that part right? That's right. This scripture right here, hmm, we're going to take the meat of this bone. Read it again, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 34, verse 1. The hopes mm -hmm. of a man void of understanding are vain and false, and dreams lift up fools. We're going to deal with that last part. It says, the hopes of a man void of understanding. Void of understanding are what are vain and false. Lies. The deceit, the mind, he is cooked up in his mind. He believes in the so-called goals he's got, but there's no realism in these goals. He says, the hopes of a man void of understanding. Because you have hopes, but you have no understanding about the hopes you have. What understanding should you have about the, these hopes, the goals that you've got? You must know how do you get from this point to that to the next point. What exactly do you do? Are you doing now to show that you are want to get to the next level? What are you doing? You understand? And if we have to examine what you are doing, does it match the hope or the goal that you've got? No, it doesn't. So it says the hopes of a man void of understanding because that's the key right there. Void of understanding. He does not have no understanding. You understand? Give me that in Sarah 21, verse 11. Because this is how we get the understanding this day. Sarah 21, verse 11. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes of 21, verse 11. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. Stop right there. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. If you keep God's commandments, you will receive understanding. That's what he's saying right there. You keep God's laws, you receive understanding. Okay, go back to where he was at. Sirach 34 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 34 verse 1. The hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false mm -hmm. and dreams lift up fools. So now you need to examine the state, the mindset of this brother right here. He, he, this is a man that has got what? He's got pipe dreams. Because he does not have the understanding to do what? To establish these dreams, these pipe dreams that he's got. Because why he says he's void of understanding. He does not keep the laws of God. Because God's commandments gives you what? Give me that, um, give me that in, uh, in, in, in Nehemiah 8, verse 8. Nehemiah 8, verse 8. Watch this. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8. Mm -hmm. So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. And caused them to understand the reading. So when you keep God's commandments, the laws of God will give you the sense to understand that this dream that I have, do I have the skill to achieve it? Okay? And if I don't have... What am I willing to do to get the resources I need to get this, this thing, this to achieve this goal? Because a simp is not going to sit down and do research also. They're not going to investigate. You understand? A simp will sit down with a problem said they won't, they won't find the solution. That's a dream. You don't sit with a problem. That's why I only tell you, brother, don't come to me with problems. Okay. Have the spirit to investigate. Mm, I'm stuck here. Can I investigate this? What is the work around around this thing? Okay, plan A is not working. Abandon it. Let's move on to plan B. What is the second plan? That's how you must think. Until you find the, right, the correct one. But you can't just say, no, it's not working. Then you sit there and say, oh, well. No, that's a simp. Because a simp is lazy to sit down and think about things. Okay, Sarah 21 verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes 21 verse 18. As is a house that is destroyed, mm -hmm. so is wisdom to a fool. So is what? Wisdom to a fool. 
and wisdom to a fool. Go ahead. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. You see that thing? This man is void of understanding. His hopes is vain and false. He's got vain and false hopes because he's void of understanding. That's why it says like what? Read that again. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom. Hold on. He says, as is, a, as is a house that is destroyed, because the, that mind is destroyed, is void of judgment, void of understanding. As is a house that is destroyed. Remember what we read always in 2nd Ezra 14.34, I mean 2nd Ezra 14.13, when it says, um, set thine house in order. Mm -hmm. As a house that is destroyed, that means this house is not set in order. Okay, let's read this sort of because I called it. Second Ezra 14, 13, real quick. Read that. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Read. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. And you see reprove. that thing? He says, now, therefore, set thine house in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Set your house in order, he's saying. Now, let's go back. Sarah 21, verse 18 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 18. Mm -hmm. As is a house that is destroyed. As so is a is house. Wisdom. Hold on. As is a house that is destroyed. How, how, how did this house become destroyed? Because there was no vision. That's how the house was able to be destroyed. You understand? As is a house that is destroyed. That's what we read in second Ezra. The Lord says, set your house in order. So that what? The house doesn't get destroyed. So is wisdom to a fool. Because a fool is not going to do anything with the wisdom because he doesn't value the wisdom. He doesn't value the word of God. Because guess what? The deceit of his mind is what he trusts upon. He believes that with everything he got and he's going to convince and deceive a simple sister that also moving in the state mind, the same mindset that he's moving in. But a wise sister will not be, will see through the BS. Okay, read that again, verse 18. Come on. As is a house that is destroyed, read. so is wisdom to a fool. Uh -huh. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. Meaning what? We, they, he's, he, didn't, he, doesn't think thing, he doesn't think things through. You must have a goal. And if you do have that goal, long and short term, if you, when you do have that goal, sit down, examine the blueprint of the goal you have and see, is this, is this achievable? Will I be able to achieve this yay or nay? Okay? Watch this. Um, go back to Sarah 34 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 34, verse 1. The hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false. Mm -hmm. And dreams lift up fools. And dreams lift up fools. Because a fool is lifted by his dreams. Because guess what? I'm going to show you the, 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 the dreamers, right? Dreamers, they like to read books like, you know, these are motivational books. That's a dreamer. A dreamer reads books like that made to motivational books. You just be reading that, that book on how to, you know, how to wake up in the morning and all, all of that garbage. The dreamers, they read books like that. Dreamers, they read books like that and they like to listen to people like T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen. You'd be surprised that brothers and sisters be listening to T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar and Joel Olstein and Joyce Mayer. You can make this stuff up, okay? Um, it says, and dreams lift up fools because they're hyped up in whatever it is that they're dreaming about, but they're not doing the things necessary to achieve it. You understand? He's lifted up by his what? His vain and false dreams. Go ahead. Meaning this is a hopeless man. He's hopeless. Come on, verse two. Whoso regarded, the, whoso regarded dreams is like him that catcheth 
at a shadow. Read and followeth after the wind. You see that thing? This is the mind state of a simp. That's the second characteristic. A simp is a dreamer. They don't do, they don't apply what they are saying. It says, Whoso regardeth dreams is like him that catcheth at a shadow. And they be attracted to these speakers, these motivational speakers. They, they know them all. They, are, they know them. They, these motivational quotes every day in the morning and all that garbage. Okay. Yeah, such and such, you know, all he had was a dream. He had two, two, two dollars in his pocket. He had 30 rand in his pocket, so on and so forth. Guess what? Listen, they just be selling you dreams. There's another, there's another brother. What's his name? I think is uh Wusi Tembekwai or something like that. Everybody yes, know any, any, know what I'm talking about? That guy is very smooth. He's a very smooth talker. Okay. Very smooth talker. Very, he's like he's got he's like what? A snake oil salesman. He's very good with the tongue, that brother. Very slick. So, but you can listen to him all day. You understand? You can listen to him all day. But he, they're not going to tell you what they do in the background to get this stuff. They're not going to tell you. But all you're going to do, they're going to sell you some soap story. They'll sell you a fairy tale thing. You understand? And you'll be chasing that fairy tale. And guess what? It doesn't come to pass. Because why? There's no realism in the thought process, the way you think, the decisions you make, and so there's, you don't have a sense of reality. And sisters, they, are con they get deceived by stuff like that, by, by nigs like those. That's a nig, okay? It says, whoso regardeth dreams is like him that catcheth at a shadow. You ever seen a cat? Because I used to have a cat when I was a child, back in the day. You understand? Whenever you would you would hold a, like a mirror to the to the sun, and you be seeing like a, the you know the, the the that bright light of that mirror just move room, the cat will be chasing that, thinking that he's gonna catch it. One place it jumps there, it sees it. You move it, you move the post, it jumps over there. Just be the whole day be doing that. That's a dreamer. A dreamer is not focused. They've got multiple things in the head. One minute they are on this thing, they drop it, they jump on the next one. Mm, I'm here, mm -mm, I'm there. That's a dreamer. You know why? Because they cannot sit down and focus. They can't. It's difficult for a dreamer to sit down and focus on one thing. The dreamers got ends in their pants. They can't sit still. That's a dreamer. They are unstable. They are double-minded. They are one foot in and one foot out. That's a dreamer right there. Okay? It says, and followeth after the wind. Can you be chasing the wind? That's a dreamer. The dreamer will tell you, yeah, no, me, I can do it. Me, I'll be able to, I'm going to be able to follow after the wind. That's a dreamer. They are not realistic. Okay? Watch this. Come on. Verse 3. The vision of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another, mm -hmm. even as the likeness of a face to a face. He says the vision of dreams is a resemblance of one thing to another because you understand, you might have a goal, but this goal, because you don't examine it, you, you don't have sense, like we read in Nehemiah 8, Sarah 21 verse 18, because Sarah 11, 29 tells you it's got many trains, because you've got many trains, guess what? This vision is not clear. It's very blurry, and you like it like that because as long as it's blurry, you don't have to sit down and discipline yourself. You can always be moving the goal. You can always be, hmm, how do I put this? You can always be making excuses for it. Okay, watch this. Jump down to verse five now. Read verse five. Divination. And soothe sayings and Stop dreams. Right there. It says divinations and soothe sayings. That's when you go to Sangomas and all of that. That all falls under the same category. You understand? Spiritual fornication, witchcraft. Divinations, familiar spirits. Okay? Divinations 
and soothe sayings. They just keep you in a dream and fairy world. Okay, come on. And what? And soothe sayings mm -hmm. and dreams. You see, the Lord is putting them in the same category. Divinations, soothe sayings, and dreams. They all sit, they all sit on one scale. Read on. Come on. Are vain. Are vain, meaning they are what? Lies. All of this is what is vexation of spirit. All this is lies and vanity. All of these divinations, soothe sayings, and dreams, this vanity. Go ahead. The heart and the heart fancy it as and a woman. The heart does, wait, wait. And the heart does what? Fancy it. And the heart fancy it. Because remember, the mind, only the desperately wicked mind can fancy after divination, soothe sayings, and dreams. False hopes. Unrealistic plans. Okay? It says, and uh, it says, a vain and the heart fancy it. A desperately wicked mind fancy after these things. Read on. Meaning they delight in these things. Evil is good. Good is evil. Read. And the heart fancied as a woman's heart in travail. As a woman's mind in travail. You ever seen a desperate woman? A woman that is desperate, that will sleep with anything that moves. You understand? Where a, a, a woman that is thirsty, a woman that's thirsty, listen, when a woman is thirsty, less they will do anything and everything to get what they want, to quench or to scratch the age. Jump down to verse 7. Watch this. For dreams have deceived men. You see that thing? For dreams have deceived men. Dreams have deceived many of the simps that are void of understanding, like we read in verse 1. Dreams have deceived simp, simps Void of understanding that we read in verse 1. Read that again, verse 7. The book of Ecclesiastes, 34, verse 7. For dreams have deceived many, mm -hmm. and they have failed that put their trust in them. It says they have failed that put their trust in them. Because a simp will put their trust in their dreams. Their, their false and vain hopes that they have, they will put their whole life on that thing. And they don't even see clear, they don't understand, it. they will do it anyway. Because why? The key is verse 5. Read verse 5 again. Divinations uh -huh. and smooth things Read. and dreams are vain. Stop right there. Divinations and smooth things and dreams are vain. So it says, but though it says, but it says, for many have deceived May, it says, for dreams have deceived many, and they have failed that put their trust in them. Because a dreamer, guess what? A dreamer, the reason why they put their trust in their dreams is because of what? Is because they believe in luck. Yeah. Dreamers, they believe in luck. Dreamers believe in luck and coincidences. Dreamers, they believe in those things. That's witchcraft. You understand? Yeah, when I woke up today, I was feeling like this and such and such. That means X, Y, and Z is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You are an idolater. Divinations, you are, you are a witch. Those are dreamers because they put their trust in those things. They look for these signs. You understand? I met such and such. It means that's a sign. It means this. Listen, no. It says dreams lift up fools. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Read that. The book of Proverbs 3 verse 5. Come on. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. No, trust in your dreams. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. No, these pipe dreams and the daydream is that you have, building lions trust, in the air. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Come on. And lean not unto thine own understanding. That's the commandment. That's a commandment right there. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Come on. 
in all thy ways acknowledge in all thy what we in all thy ways acknowledge in all in all in all in all in all thy ways acknowledge him that means even the goals you have acknowledge the most high the short term whether it be short term or long term acknowledge the father you understand in all thy ways acknowledge the most high god on this earth read on come on in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths you see that thing when you acknowledge the most high god because you lean not on your own understanding you gonna what you gonna the lord will direct your path next verse watch this come on verse 7 be not wise in thine own eyes don't be wise in your own eyes because a simp a dreamer is wise in their own eyes because their own their eyes their eyes is getting the vision from where their mind and what is the state of that mind corrupted that mind is sick but the 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 dreamer guess what they are wise in their own eyes okay read that part again be not wise in thine own eyes read fear the lord uh -huh. and depart from evil because when you try you only trust the deceit of your own mind you don't fear the lord and you are in the midst of evil your mind is full of evil and madness has smitten that mind. Watch this. Give me Sarah 37 verse 14. Because a dreamer, he trusts, he is wise in his own eyes. Watch this. Sarah 37 verse 14. He is wise in his own eyes and he trusts in his own wicked mind that deceives him on a day to, on a day, to day. Watch this. Sarah 37 verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For a man's mind is sometime. For a man's mind is sometime. For a what? Wait, wait. For a what? What did he say? For a man's mind. For a man's mind. So the subject matters about the mind, the heart of men. For a man's mind, come on. Is sometime won't to tell him more than seven watchmen you see that thing is as a, a man's mind is sometime won't to tell him more than seven watchmen because this mind is musing upon many things like seven watchmen sitting upon his head all over the place you understand a wandering mind is a noisy mind that mind is noisy there's too much noise up in there there is not calm because it's the mind of that brother is not stayed on the Lord. He stayed on his what? He is relying on his own mind. That is sick. Okay, read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes 37, verses 14. For a man's mind is sometime wont to tell him more than seven watchmen. Really? That sit above in a high tower. That sit above in and the seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower. Because guess what? This one, this brother, he does not have stability in his mind. Wisdom as knowledge is not is, is, is not what stabilizes that mind, what calms that mind. No, no, no. Mm -mm. The dreams calm him down. These false hope he's got, that's how he becomes. That's how or so he thinks, calms his mind. So the seven watchmen, their job is to do what? Is to confuse you. Because all of them are speaking at the same time, all of them giving different, different uh, perspective on what they think and how they feel because they also rely on their own mind. You see that thing? So now the mind, the, 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 the mind of a simp is the, is the mind that relies heavily on their own eyes. They trust upon that. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sirach 6, verse 2, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 2. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart. That's the same thing we read in Proverbs. Be not wise in, their own, in thine own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes. 
He says, extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart. Don't be exalting yourself in the counsel of your own mind. The subject matter is, is about thyself. Because you yourself, you are doing what? You are exalting yourself in the counsel of your own mind. The mind is sick, but guess what? You are relying on the mind that is sick to counsel yourself. What is that called? You have self-destructive tendencies. That's the mind of a simp. A dreamer thinks like that. A dreamer is self-destructive. A dreamer. A dreamer is self-destructive. You understand? Read that again, verse 2. Extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart, mm -hmm. that thy soul be not torn in pieces as a bull string alone. You see what the scripture says? That your soul, that your soul, because now your mind, remember your, your mind is a spirit, right? Your, the, your, if your mind is healthy, you're going to make healthy judgments. You're going to make sound judgments. You're going to make, make healthy decisions. But if your mind, your mind is cancelled by yourself, as if there's seven watchmen sitting upon that mind, guess what? It says your soul will not, will, your, your soul is going to be torn in pieces as a bull straying alone. Because nobody can, nobody can, can guide you or what and say, bruh, this plan that you have, this plan is not realistic at all. That plan is not realistic. Let's, 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 let's examine the plan and take out the things that are going to make this plan to go nowhere. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 30, verse 21, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30 and verse 21. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 21. Come on, verse 21, read. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. What did the Bible say? Give not over thy mind to heaviness. So here's another way. Remember what we read when he says, don't give yourself over. He says, them that have given themselves over to fornication, like we read in Jude. You understand? So he says, give not over thy mind to heaviness. Meaning what? Don't, I, I don't, don't inflict pain, pain to yourself. A dreamer, that's what they do. Because when that dream don't come true, guess what? They will become bitter. They hate themselves. They have self-loathing tendencies. They loathe themselves. You think they're going to be able to love others when, because they loathe themselves? That's not going to happen. It's counterintuitive, but this mind of a simp, of this dreamer, is blind, like we read in Deuteronomy 28, 28. Okay, read that again. Verse 21. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Stop right there. This goes into depression. A dreamer... A lot of the times a dreamer is depressed. A dreamer is depressed. You understand? They feel sorry for themselves. That's a dreamer. Go ahead. And afflict not, and afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. You see that part? The word, the key word here says afflict. And afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. Because to afflict meaning what? To harm. Don't harm yourself with your own counsel. Because what is the Lord saying? If you counsel yourself, you're going to harm yourself. If you counsel yourself, you're going to harm yourself. He says, afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. Because the Lord is the counselor. The Lord is, how does he counsel us? He counsels us through his word. That's how the Lord does it. So that's why it says, afflict not. Don't, don't harm yourself. Don't destroy yourself with your own counsel. Because if you do that, you because you trust your mind, you're going to destroy yourself. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Stop right there. The thoughts of mortal men, meaning the thoughts of sinful men, dreamers, filthy dreamers, the thoughts of filthy dreamers are what? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. 
Come and on. our devices are but uncertain. Our devices, our plans, our dreams, our goals that are not, our unrealistic goals are uncertain. Yes, what do you expect? Because you have unrealistic goals. You put the most basic timetable together, but you can't even follow it. Is not is it realistic if you think? Two things. Either it is realistic, but you just don't have the balls. I'm gonna put it straight. You don't have the stones to follow it. You don't have so that timetable is is is, is testify against, testifying against you. A simp is not gonna see it like that though. He's not gonna see that that timetable is testifying against him. And a simp, that dreamer is not gonna get cut by that. No, no, he's desensitized from this. Okay, read that again, verse 14. Was the Solomon chapter nine verse 14. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Mm -hmm. And our devices are but uncertain. Our devices, our plans, our unrealistic goals and dreams, they are uncertain because where no vision is, the people will perish. Read on. Verse 15, come on. For the corruptible body, mm -hmm. press it down the soul. Read. And the earthly tabernacle, where down the mind that museth upon many things. How, how is this mind able to muse upon many things? Kim, go back to Sarah 34. I mean, Sarah 37, 14. It says, it says what? And the earthy tabernacle weigheth, weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. Sarah 37 verse 14. Read that. Was the Solomon? No, no. Ecclesiasticus 34, 37 verse 14. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 37 verses 14. Read. For a man's mind is sometime won't to tell him more than seven watchmen mm -hmm. that sit above in an high tower. That sit above in a high tower. These seven watchmen is the reason why, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 15 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 15. Read. For the corruptible body breath it down the soul mm -hmm. and the earthly tabernacle Weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. This mind that is musing upon many things is because of what? Is because of the seven watchmen that is what? That is that is generating noise in your thought process. Read on, verse 16. And hardly do we and hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. You see what he's saying? And hardly. Hardly, meaning seldom, do we guess right? Do we guess aright at things that are upon earth? You understand? Because that's why it says, but our device, but it says, and our devices are but uncertain in verse 14. So verse, verse 16 is expounding what he said in verse 14. Read that again, verse 16. Was the Muslim chapter 9, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And hardly do we guess right, and hardly do we guess right at things that are upon earth. Read. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. Read. But the things that are in heaven, who hath searched out. Now that's some heavy stuff right here. Read that verse again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 16. And hardly do we guess right at things that are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. Stop right there. And with labor, with labor, do we find the things that are before us? Meaning what? When you labor, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be guessing nothing. There's no guesswork. It says, and with labor, do we find? You're not guessing it, you are finding it. Not searching, no, finding. When you are searching, that means the thing that you are searching for is yet to be found. Yes, saying, do we find? Is do we find? We find, meaning there's certainty. Because what brings certainty? The laws of God bring certainty. And guess what? Realistic goals bring certainty. What brings the certainty more important? Laboring. Yes, you have a goal, but are you laboring to achieve it? Are you laboring to find it? 
That's why it says, and with labor do we find the things that are before us. How is that thing that you're going to find that is, how is it going to stand before you? How is that going to happen? By magic? No, you must labor so that the thing that you're going to find after you labor, it will stand before you. You see, the Bible is simple. But because there's seven watchmen up here, that's the reason why things are so complicated for us. Basic things choking at the milk. You understand? That's some heavy stuff. That's some heavy stuff right there. Watch this. Give me the book of James. Okay? James chapter 1 verse 8. The apostle James. The apostle James was heavy. The apostle James. James chapter 1 verse 8. Watch this. Come on. James 1 verse 8. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. No, in some of his ways. In all his ways. In all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He's double-minded. Why is he double-minded? Because he's got seven watchmen up in here. He don't trust upon the Lord. He trusts upon the seven watchmen that are sitting upon his sick and wicked mind. He trusts upon that. Watch this. Give me Sirach 128. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 28. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 28. Come on. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor. Read that. Read that again. This, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 28. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor. He says, distrust not. So when you distrust the Lord, you are breaking the commandments. This is a commandment right here. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor. So does it mean that when you are rich, you must, you must distrust it? No, no, you don't, it's not saying that. You understand? Distrust not the fear of the Lord. Remember it says, trust in the Lord with all thy mind, with all your heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Now read that again, verse 28. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 28. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor. Mm -hmm. and come not unto him with a double heart. Don't come before the Most High God with a double heart. Don't be double-minded. But a dreamer is double-minded because tomorrow is here, the next day is going to be somewhere else. A dreamer, guess what? A dreamer is a, is, is, is a dreamer is a betrayer. Yes. A dreamer is a betrayer. Because they are unstable. They are not disciplined in the laws of God. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 5. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Come on. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. For the what? Deceit. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. Who flee deceit. No, the Holy Spirit of discipline. The what is the Holy Spirit? The laws of God. The laws of God is what's going to discipline you to become a disciple. To become a disciplined student, you must be disciplined in God's laws. But if you have a dreamer, a dreamer does not have discipline. A dreamer is not disciplined in nothing. No, he is disciplined in some things, wicked things. So he doesn't necessarily like the, the, the spirit of discipline. He just chooses where he applies his discipline. What is that called? Evil. The mind that is desperately wicked. They'll go out of the, the realm of reality. You understand? To prove you right in their stupidity. That's the dreamer. You understand? Watch this. Give me James 1.22. This is what the Apostle James said. James chapter 1, verse 22. Come on, come on. 
James 1.22. The book of James. Chapter 1, verses 22. Read. But be ye doers of the word. Be ye what? And not, but be ye doers of the word. But be ye doers of the word. Don't be a dreamer. Be a doer. Do it. Read that part again. Read it again. Read it again. The book of James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not mm. hearers only. Deceiving your own soul. You see what happens when, when you hear, when you just dream about it, you're deceiving your own self. So what is that called? Mental illness. Mm -hmm. That's a mental illness. That's a mental hang up you have. That's a mental illness. That's a, you are spiritually sick and mentally sick. And that mind is guiding the body to sickness also. Read that again, verse 22. The book of James chapter 1 verse 22. Read. But be doers of the word mm -hmm. and not hearers only. Read. Deceiving your own selves. Deceiving your own selves. So is that is very simple. It's clear, plain English. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Don't be sitting here looking like a professional student. No. And what? And he says deceiving your own selves. You don't want to deceive your own self. But when you just hear, you receive it, like the Christian church, you don't take notes, you don't study, you don't apply what you study. You're deceiving your own selves. Read on. Verse 23. Come on. For Next verse. If, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. You see that thing? He says you are like unto a man beholding a natural face in a glass. The glass is the Bible. Your natural face is your sinful self. You look at yourself through the Bible, you see the flaws that you need to fix. You understand? Come on. Watch this. Come on. So he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway yeah. forget it. Read that part again, verse 24. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 24. Read. For he beholdeth himself. Stop right there. He says, for he beholdeth himself. He sees himself in this Bible. Yes, you see yourself, who you are according to the Bible. Yes. But you see the stuff that you are doing wrong because the Bible is a book of law and order. You see the things that you are doing wrong. Okay. It says, for he beholdeth himself. You see, you beholding yourself in the in the class, the Bible, and go with his way. You understand? Now it's time for you to apply. That's why I said go with his way. Because you the Bible is open, you are studying. When you close it, that's when you apply it. He go with his way. And straightway, meaning immediately, forgetteth what manner of man he was. Meaning what? You forget your sinful self. You make excuses. That's how you make yourself to forget. You make excuses for your sins. Because while the Bible is closed, that's when you're supposed to apply. And instead of you applying, you make excuses why you're not applying it. What is that called? Mental illness. That's a dreamer right there. Instead of putting the plan together, because if a doer, like we read in verse 22, by BB doers of the word, a doer will put a plan together. They'll have a goal, short term and long term. They will have a steps, step-by-step -step instruction on how they are going to achieve this goal. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. Step-by-step -step instruction on how they will achieve it. That's a doer, not a hearer. First Samuel 2, verse 3. Watch this. First book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Mm -hmm. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Read. Right? For the Lord is a God of knowledge. For the and Lord is him. a God. Hold on. Wait, wait. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. What is the knowledge? The commandments. For the Lord is a God of law and order. 
That's what it says, set thine house in order. For the Lord is a God of order. That's what this knowledge is going into. Because the laws of God gives you what? Order and decency. Okay? Read on. Come on. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And mm -hmm. by him, actions are weighed. No, dreams are, are weighed. Actions are weighed. Fairy tales. A and by him, actions are weighed. And by him, by the most High God, he's the one that is going to what? Weigh your actions. He's not going to deal with you on what you say, mm -mm, what you do. That's how the Lord is going to do it, by what you do. That's how the most high God will do this thing, by what you do. Okay, I'm going to end the class right here. Okay, I'm going to end it right here. All right, um, let's break bread. First Corinthians 11, 23. First Corinthians 11, verse 23. With that, we say shalom. Okay, all praises to the most high God. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who laid down his life for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, that we also this day may have life. Let's read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you is doing remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, is to ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.